Wiz Kids Oklahoma celebrating 21 years of tutoring and mentoring Oklahoma City students. We're going to learn more about that, including learning more about an upcoming banquet to honor their volunteers and some fundraising as well. I'm Dave Morris here in the Oklahoma's Video Studio. Happy to be joined by these two ladies. BJ. BJ Webb, yes. Executive Director, and Shay Gordon, Assistant Director. Yes. Ladies, thanks for your time today. Thank you uh, for having us. Very nice to meet you. We certainly appreciate you stopping in. Uh, let's just start with the basic questions here. What is WizKids? WizKids is a mentoring and tutoring program that facilitates tutors one-on-one -on -one to help at-risk students that are reading below school level. And how big of a need is this in this community? Well, considering that 73% of our fourth graders are not reading to level, it's a huge concern for our city. And we work with the Oklahoma City Public Schools, we work with Middell Schools, we work with Putman City Schools, Millwood, Oak, Crooked Oak, and then um, Crutch Oak. So that's how many districts we're in right now. Uh, how does it work? How, does the, how, how do you guys interact with the students? Sure, so we have a weekly tutoring mentoring session with our students across the 29 different sites that we currently are involved in. The students, most of our sites meet directly after school, so the students are transported to the site. They have a meal time with their tutor mentor. They have our club time, and then they work one-on-one -on -one with their tutor mentor working on homework assignments, but mainly reading in a one-on-one -on -one situation with their tutor mentor. We're looking at some B-roll and some, yeah. some images that is related with your program. Tell me more about sites. What do you mean when you say sites? Sure. So we have, again, 29 sites currently across the Oklahoma City metro area. We partner them directly with an elementary school, as BJ talked about, six to, across six different school districts. Um, they are The site is the actual hosting site in which our kids and tutors and volunteers attend. So we have multiple ways that the volunteers, the one-on-one -on -one mentor, there's also a food team, a transportation team, that type of thing. But the host side is not the only partner. We have over 76 different churches that we partner with along with other corporations and community partners that help us to mentor and love on these kids. So those sites then come to the host site to have the weekly session. Seems like it takes a cast of thousands. Absolutely. It does. We have over 1,200 volunteers wow. um, that help us to serve just at around 800 kids currently. 800 kids are being served. Right. Every year that number changes because our children have to re-enroll every year and so do our volunteers. Mm -hmm. And most of our volunteers stay with a child from three to five years once they become their mentor. But we are expecting to have over 800 kids this year, but because of our community that we reach are so transit, they move. And so with that, and the school district being pretty mobile right now, we've lost some of our kids, and when they go to another school that is a whiz kids school, they go to the top of our waiting list. So as soon as we get volunteers for them, we'll get them placed, and that number will go up. WizKids is a division of City Care Incorporated. Um, how did it get started? Well, Larry Bross is the founder of City Care, and he started with a homeless breakfast. He recognized seeing um, whosoever come breakfast at his church, he, he recognized a group of people that he didn't know existed in Oklahoma, and that is the homeless. And he's like, where is this community Yeah, where is this from? community coming from? So he got involved with that and got a, started loving on them, decided to really bridge the gap between homeless and people that could help homeless become actively involved in citizens in our community that we all self want self-sufficiently. Mm -hmm. So he started uh, City Care to provide case management and homes, first of all, with a Persian Center, which is a, a Persian Center is our step out of homelessness into a two-year program of sobriety and case management where people learn to that they can have life again after situations that cause them to lose their homes. And from there, they can move into permanent housing in West Lawn, where we're located, and that has been a great source of support in our city. We also manage the day shelter along with Homeless Alliance. So all of this affords our community better citizens that are able to care for themselves and less on the taxpayers' dollars. <laughs> wow. On the on the WizKids front here, uh, what, what 
what are the is there, is there a specific demographic is there a specific uh, barrier that you guys well as see? Larry was working with the homeless community and helping them become sustainable he realized that to be more successful we needed to do something that was preventative so we heard about Wiz Kids out of Denver, Colorado, and went there and did some research and brought it back to Oklahoma. And it is an effort to keep kids out of poverty and able to care for themselves as well as being the characters that we need them to be, better morals and uh, good citizens for our community. So that's where it all started. And then we realized when we started this program, the founder of Wiz Kids, his whole premise was to bring inner city and suburban together to serve the kids. So he started meeting in churches that were located close to the schools and asking suburban churches to come in and partner with those churches to provide the services. It's a great idea, you know, getting the community to help the community. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the banquet off the top here, the uh, Seeds of Hope mm -hmm. is coming up towards the end of March. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our Seeds of Hope is an annual event that we have an amazing combination of our volunteers as well as our financial supporters that come to the banquet. We have around 800 of those 1,200 volunteers that we mentioned that, come, that attend that event along with anywhere between four and 600 of the community wow. um, yeah, at so large. That's a that comes, yeah. It's um, w one of the largest events in the Oklahoma City area. We have to have it at the Cox Convention Center um, because of the size of the event. We've outgrown every other venue <laughs> in the Oklahoma <laughs> City area. Um, so that event, though, is just a great celebration of um, really appreciating our volunteers and yes. their giving hearts along with our financial supporters and their giving hearts. Um, this year's event is, again, Monday, March 28th mm -hmm. um, at the Cox Convention Center. We'll start at six o'clock we have a very large silent auction um, yes. with a fun congrats little, on that yes. that's not yeah. the easiest to round up sometimes <laughs> it is not but we have a very large silent auction so that's a lot of fun as kind of a pre-function to the event and the actual um, agenda will start at 6 30 and normally we end about 8 30. Um, this year we uh, have Carrie Casey who is our speaker for the evening um, he is the president and CEO of the um, foundation for the fatherless the National Foundation for the Fatherless. Um, he's been um, the chaplain for the Dallas Cowboys as well as the Kansas City Chiefs. Wow. So he's <laughs> yeah really big on um, fathering those who haven't had a chance to have a father. So we thought it was perfect fit for um, the group of students that we serve. Again, this event is March 28th coming up at the Cox Convention Center. In addition to that, how can people get involved? How can they say, hey, this is a worthwhile program, an opportunity, I want to help out, how can they? Well, we thank you for this opportunity to be here sharing our story and our need. And we really do have children all over the Oklahoma City area that need. In fact, there's 26,000 kids in Oklahoma that need our program mm -hmm. in this area. But we can only do it with the help of volunteers, and we're very fortunate to have 1,200 or more wonderful, willing volunteers. But Shay will tell you, Every day we have a school or a parent calling us for more help with their kids and how they can get into Wiz Kids. So she is forced to say, <laughs> as soon as we get to that school, but uh, we basically operate from volunteers contacting our office and or finding our website, www.wizkidsok.org, and or just calling our number. It's also word of mouth. We have some wonderful volunteers and they have their friends and coworkers that help us. As a matter of fact, one of our bank presidents um, had his assistant had a son that needed our help, and he made a phone call to us. And happens to be that we were at that school where that child attended. And um, they're very fortunate to say he's a very successful fifth grader now because he had two or three years of help from Wiz Kids. And I would say that our largest need, obviously, is those tutor mentors, mm -hmm. those who can make a weekly commitment. And even if one person can't make a weekly commitment, partner up with someone and make a every other commitment. And um, there needs to be consistency there with the types of children that we work with. And that seems to lack in their community. So there needs to be some consistency. So that's our largest need, our tutors and mentors. But if there's not, if there's not an opportunity for a weekly or every other weekly um, commitment, we can 
certainly use um, substitutes that could come every once in a while. We have two very large one-time events, Seeds of Hope being one of them that we always use volunteers for, as well as our Spring Fling event, that which is, absolutely is, huge. It is very large. <laughs> it's about 1,200 people as well. Um, held. You guys do nothing small scale. <laughs> yeah. well, Not we bring really. Those kids together for Not that really. Event. But that sure event is, that. yeah, mm -hmm. kids focused. It's out at Crystal Lake. Um, this year, it's going to be. Um, at the end of April, but we have concessions and we have fishing and we have boating and we have archery. face painting and time. archery. It's a really good time. Okay. So we have one-time events. We have your weekly commitment, but we also have one-time events and of course financial support um, in order to be able to continue what we do. There's always the need for financial support. Absolutely. One last question. You guys mentioned off the top uh, the reading portion of this, but what does a mentor provide uh, or a tutor provide specifically if a person's watching this and well, I Wonders, I'm not sure if I'm qualified. Yeah. yeah. Well, I tell every volunteer there are three things that you must be to be a tutor mentor for Wiz Kids. You must first show up, be consistent, as Shay said, because they're accustomed to abandonment and broken promises. So you don't want to feed into so that. So you don't right. want to feed into, I'm going to do it and then don't do it. So you have to really be led that you can keep your commitment. And then the second thing you must do is live out a moral life before them because they need a model to follow. And after you've lived out who you are and what they can be, the third thing you get to do is speak into their lives and help them stay on track. So those are the three things we tell tutors they must be able to do. But I say if you love children and you know how to read at a sixth grade level <laughs> and you have time once a week during the school year to give up a couple hours of your life, you have a lot of children waiting for your help. Mm -hmm. Very well said. These kids. Uh, <laughs> Again, the, the event March 28th over at the Cox Convention Center. You can find more information at whizkidsok.org. Ladies, again, very nice to meet you. you too. Congrats on the, on the success of this program, and best Thank of luck you. moving forward as well. Thank You'll you. You'll be our guest, I hope. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs>